Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. I am working as consultant nephrologist and a kidney transplant specialist at Pace Hospitals, Hitech City, Hyderabad. Today I will be speaking about high potassium levels in patients with kidney disease, what is the role of diet and what are the methods to control this high potassium level in the blood. Our body is made up of millions and millions of cells. So, if we take one cell, the contents which are present inside the cell is called as intracellular content, which is present outside the cell is called as extracellular content. Basically, the blood is an extracellular compartment. The potassium which is present inside the body is mainly an intracellular compartment. Majority of the potassium in the blood is present inside the cells and small amount is present outside the cell in the blood. So, whenever we take blood sample, and measure the potassium, we are measuring the potassium level in the extracellular compartment which usually has the lesser amount of potassium. So, normal potassium level in the body is somewhere between 3.5 to 5 milli equivalents per liter. If the potassium level crosses more than 5.5, it is called as hyperkalemia or high potassium levels. If the potassium increases more than 6 or 6.5, it is severe hyperkalemia. So, if the potassium level increases in the blood, it can lead to muscle paralysis, muscle weakness and sometimes cardiac abnormalities like heart irregular beating. It can lead to irregular beating of the heart which can be life threatening and sometimes it can lead to death. So, very high potassium levels are very dangerous. So, we should avoid higher potassium levels in the blood. So, coming to discussion of higher potassium levels in the blood, high potassium level is also called as hyperkalemia. In patients with kidney disease, higher potassium levels and lower potassium levels, both can happen. But usually higher potassium levels are more problematic as the kidney damage worsens and as the patient progresses to end stage kidney disease requiring dialysis. So, coming to the first topic that is about the normal physiology of potassium in the body in a healthy patient. In a healthy patient or in a healthy person, whatever potassium we take is excreted from our body. It is the same amount like if we take 5 milli equivalents of potassium per day, the same amount goes out of the body diet. So, diet has the potassium which goes inside our body and potassium is sent out of our body via sweat, stools and urine. Out of these three, stools and urine are very important uh, routes via which the potassium is sent out of the body. If you take stool and urine, in healthy patients, urine is the major route via which potassium is sent out of the body. Kidneys will try to send more potassium if it is present in the blood to be secreted in the urine and via urine higher high potassium levels which are present in the blood are sent out. If the kidneys are not functioning well, the potassium level in the stool also increases. Normally whatever diet we take, the potassium which is present in the diet is absorbed in the intestines into the blood, the remaining amount of the potassium is sent out in the stools. This potassium content in the stool increases if the fiber content of the diet increases. So, if we take less fiber and if the patient has constipation, potassium content which is present in the stools decreases and more potassium is retained in the blood. So, what I mean to tell is if the constipation risk is there or if the patient is suffering from constipation, especially in patients who, ha who is having uh, lower kidney function there is increased risk of higher potassium. So, whenever we take normal diet, normal diet has all the components like it will, it will have minerals, ions, carbohydrates, proteins. So, whenever we take normal diet, this the components of this diet will get absorbed into the blood. So, carbohydrates and proteins will cause the insulin to be secreted from the pancreas. This insulin what it will do is, it will push the potassium from the blood to inside the cells. So, whatever potassium we take in the diet will be pushed inside the cells, majority of that. 
So, patients who, who are having uncontrolled diabetes with lesser insulin levels in their blood, they are at more risk of high potassium levels in the diet. The first one is the lesser kidney function. If the kidney function decreases, as I have already mentioned, less and less of potassium is excreted in the urine. So, potassium level increases in the blood. The second one is the diet. If the patient consumes a diet which is high in potassium, there is also increased risk of high levels of potassium in the blood. Third one is the medications. Uh, there are few drugs like potassium sparing diuretics, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and beta blockers. They can increase the risk of hyperkalemia, the high potassium levels in the blood. The fourth one is the constipation which I have already mentioned. Constipation also increases the risk of high potassium levels. And the fifth one is if the patient is having higher acid levels in the blood, which is usually seen in patients with kidney disease, higher acid levels also increases the risk of high potassium levels in the blood. The first one is the high potassium diet. High potassium diet if we take vegetables, in the vegetables tomatoes, potatoes and spinach, these will have high potassium levels and in the fruits bananas, kiwis, oranges and dry fruits, they have high potassium levels and milk, yogurt, legumes, seeds and uh, fish, they also have high potassium levels. Coming to the low potassium diet, if we take vegetables, usually cucumber and green leaves, they have lower potassium and in, and in the fruits, fruits like apple, pineapple and uh, watermelon and uh, strawberries and grapes, they have lower amount of potassium and usually all the whole grains have uh, lesser amount of potassium and uh, cheese and poultry and egg, they have lesser amount of potassium compared to fish and uh, legumes or seeds. So, whenever we encounter a patient uh, with kidney disease and uh, having higher potassium levels in the blood, we ask their uh, diet history. We will ask the patient to recall the last three days uh, of uh, diet uh, components to see whether the patient is taking high uh, potassium diet or not. And we will uh, review their uh, drug chart to see whether uh, there are any drugs which are increasing the potassium level in the blood. And uh, we will ask for history of uh, constipation and we will uh, see if their blood sugars are controlled or not and uh, we will measure their acid levels in the blood. So, this is the evaluation which we do for a patient with high potassium levels in the blood suffering from kidney disease. The first and the foremost is to adjust the diet. As I have already mentioned, the main source of potassium for our body is via diet, the main or the only source because potassium can go inside our body via only diet or whatever we take. So, first one is we should regulate the diet of the patient to decrease the high potassium containing diets and increase the low potassium containing diets. Next one is to address whether patient is taking any potassium uh, additive containing foods. Some of the foods will have potassium additives like potassium chloride or potassium citrate. We should check the ingredients of the foods whichever we are taking to avoid such foods. The third one is to see what type of salt we are taking in the diet. There is something called as low sodium diet, low sodium salt. In this, in, in, in few types of low sodium salt, a potassium chloride is a component because potassium chloride will also give the same salt taste like sodium chloride which is a normal salt potassium chloride is added to this low sodium salts. So, ingredients of, a, of the salt which is being consumed at home is to be seen and if potassium chloride is a component of that salt, that has to be avoided. And next one is avoid taking any forms of fruit juices because fruit juices are rich in potassium. Even if we take juices of fruits which are low in potassium, it can increase the risk of high potassium levels like taking whole of an apple is different from taking a juice of an apple because juice of an apple is rich in 
potassium or it is having higher potassium compared to whole of an apple. In the same way, dry fruits and normal fruits. If we take grapes, they are low in potassium, but the raisins which are dry fruits, they will have higher potassium. So, this we need to keep in mind. And the next one is something called as wet cooking method. In the wet cooking method, first we will take water and increase the temperature or increase the temperature of water to somewhere between 40 to 50 degrees uh, Celsius. Then uh, after that, we will cut all the green leafy vegetables or all the vegetables which are used for cooking. Uh, they are cut into small pieces and they are soaked in that hot water for at least 30 to 60 minutes. By doing this, the potassium and phosphorus which are which is which are present inside these vegetables and green leafy vegetables will be leached into that hot water. This is called as wet cooking method and after half an hour to one hour that water has to be drained out and the vegetables are taken out and are used for making curries. After this, if the patient is suffering from constipation, we need to address the constipation. Constipation occurs if there is lesser fiber content in the diet. So, we need to increase the fiber content of the diet by increasing the fruits, vegetables and whole grains in patients suffering from higher potassium levels. If this change in diet is not sufficient to uh, avoid or treat constipation, we add medications or syrups to treat the constipation in these patients. After that, if the patient is suffering from higher or uncontrolled blood sugar levels, strict blood sugar control is done by increasing uh, insulin doses or by adding medications to control their blood sugar levels. And the next step we also do is to make their diet alkaline. So, uh, what I mean by this is in patients with kidney disease, the acid levels increase in the blood because kidneys excrete the acid which is generated in our body in day to day life in the urine. If the kidneys does not work properly, the acid will get accumulated in the blood. So, what are the acidic diets? Acidic diets are mainly animal protein diets like whatever non-vegetarian diet uh, we take, it leads to more amount of acid production because they are having more amount of sulphur and this will lead to increased acid generation in the body. So, first we need to convert that acidic diet to alkaline diet. Alkaline diet is the diet which is mainly plant based where fruits and vegetables are more. So, this will lead to lesser acid production in the body and if this change in diet is not sufficient, we usually add few medications like bicarbonate tablets in these patients to bring the bicarbonate level in their blood to a specific value with specific target value. So, this will also prevent or treat the high potassium levels in these patients.